Okay, let's get started. Thanks all for coming on uh, Saturday morning to this webinar. And um, this is a good time to talk about some new things that have been added to Edrata in the last week. And it's really all about earnings data. So that's something that's been <clears throat> in the works for, for uh, quite some time. And it's taken uh, a little while to uh, put it all together, um, mainly because getting historical earnings dates has always been a bit of a tricky uh, situation. So um, yeah, I, I finally think I have a good curated uh, um, set of information um, that I've put together and is now available to anybody who is running Edgerate with the uh, Edgerate premium data. So uh, I'll show you what it's all about and uh, how you can how you can use this this really useful information. So first off, let's just uh, get into the actual program. I have some more slides um, that I might get into if we have time, but I think there's quite a lot to get through uh, before that. So let's just okay. So I don't know if if uh, you've had a chance to run Edgerator since the release of this information, but the the data has been in there since uh, Wednesday, I believe, around Wednesday. And so you'll, what you'll find is when you open the program now, you'll have a new category in uh, in your list of categories on the right-hand side here. And it's called earnings. Uh, if you, when you first run the program, if it's not a brand new installation, you've, you've had uh, Iterator installed for a while, this category will probably appear way at the bottom of the list um, because it's a new category and they kind of get added to the bottom of the list. But you can actually drag it to where you prefer. So I've I've uh, dragged this category up to near the top. Um, I think it's uh, super useful, and I'll uh, definitely be using it uh, regularly. And of course, uh, you can any of the templates that are in here. You can click on the star beside the template, and it will appear in your favorites category. So I'll do that as well. At the moment, there's only one template in here, and it's earnings moves CB to CA. That uh, stands for basically close before earnings, uh, should be CBE, to uh, close after earnings, CAE. Uh, and I'm going to run this template on my list of uh, weekly options. You can run this on the entire uh, list of all USA, but it will take longer. Um, so I'm just going to run it on the, the list of weeklies. Uh, I've already done that. So <laughs> so here's the uh, here's the report that you get from this. It's very it's very useful. Uh, report. So I'll uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so what you'll see is it'll, it will be sorted mainly when you first run the template by next earnings. So uh, bars to next earnings. So if there's zero bars to uh, bars prior to the earnings, it means you have no opportunity to trade before the earnings. Uh, if there's one bar, you have one bar of trading before the earnings. So um, uh, and then the things to note are EMO stands for earnings are released before the market open or AMC, which is earnings are released after the market close. Uh, so they're the two main ones. You, you occasionally get others. Um, there's some uh, occasions where the whether it's before or after is unknown. Um, so they don't appear at the top of this list here. And you can also get earnings that are during market hours. That's not useful for doing any kind of uh, testing. So I think they're generally filtered out to those ones. Yeah, so that's it. The next earnings columns are really useful. So when you run this template, uh, after you've got your new set of data, you'll find out what, earn what earnings are coming up uh, with it. And you have one chance, one bar to, uh, to trade before that release um, and so on two bars, three bars, and four bars. So you can get a good idea of the uh, the stocks that uh, that have earnings. Now, the with the, the reason it's taken a little bit of time to get this information together is it's actually fairly easy to find earnings dates, but it's not so easy to find out this information about before market open or after market close. And that turns out to be a very important uh, piece of information when it comes to doing any kind of uh, testing, because you can have an earnings date for instance, the earnings date could be, um, say, uh, 
Friday, last Friday, say the earnings date was last Friday, the uh, 26th of August. Um, but you don't know, unless you know whether earnings are after the market or before the market, you don't know if uh, the move that's associated with those earnings is going to occur on the Friday, which would mean it would be the earnings were released before the market opened. And then for you had the whole of uh, Friday trading um, after the earnings release. So you had a bar of trading there or whether um, the earnings are listed for Friday, but it's after market close on Friday, in which case on Friday you have, you have a, a full bar of trading before those earnings are released. And so any move that's associated with those earnings will, uh, will be on, on the Monday. So, uh, so that's uh, super important information for doing any kind of uh, testing. But that's, uh, uh, I believe that's uh, sorted out now. <laughs> that's uh, all that historical data is now part of the uh, premium data package. So the, the report will, will uh, go through for your symbol list, for however much data you have in your symbol list. Uh, and in my list of CBOE weeklies, I have 10 years worth of data. And it will pick out the prior earnings. So the first off, it will tell you what the, the move has been in a stock since the last earnings. So here you can see in PDD, the, um, the chart, by the way, showing you these blue, these blue lines are the actual, uh, these are your last bars before, earn, last bar before earnings. So the last possible chance to trade before earnings. Okay. So, um, so the move since is telling you the, uh, the current level from the bar after earnings were released. So if you, if you think about the, the earnings here, we'll take a, look, a closer look at this. So, so PDD, okay, this blue line is indicating the uh, last bar before earnings. So earnings were not released on this bar, but this was the last tradable day before earnings. Um, earnings were released uh, uh, the, the, the first tradable day after earnings is this bar after that. And then the closing price of that first tradable day is the point, the base level for the rest of the period before the next earnings um, in the system. That's the close price after earnings are released. Everything is factored in. All trading has been done for that day after that public release of information. And that close price is the, is the price that um, you know, traders have uh, agreed on is the correct price for that stock uh, with all of the information that's been released in the earnings report and everything that's that's known about the company that is a decent level to uh, for the stock and so the uh, price the percent since last is however much percent up or down since that um, since that bar okay so, so right now we can look at that level of that uh, bar after earnings was 48.22. The level on Friday was 57.46. That's a 19% gain since the last earnings. Okay. The E1 is the price move that happened on the last earnings. So the last earnings were back here on uh, 5.26, or at least <laughs> the last tradable bar before earnings was 5.26.22. And that resulted in a 15% move. You can see it here in the chart and the, in the lower area. You can see that there is a 15% uh, indication here. And that's the price basically from the close before earnings right here to the close after earnings right here. That move there. That's, that's the move resulting from that public release of information uh, in the earnings report. Okay, and if you scroll back through this chart, you'll see, um, you know, various uh, uh, indications of whether that was a positive move uh, from earnings or a negative move. So you'll see the blue line, and you'll you can sort of see from the chart itself whether there was a an up move or a down move. But then this chart area below shows the actual percent move. But also, if you look through this report and just go back through E1, E2, E3, we're going back in previous earnings. Um, this actually shows you in a nice visual way, uh, also color coded in green being, being up and uh, red being down move for earnings. 
Um, but, you, but yeah, the chart is synchronized with that and uh, is designed to show that information as well. So that's kind of a summary of uh, of what you can what you can see. Um, it's interesting to obviously you can sort this as well. So you can sort by the price, the move since the last earnings. So we can see what stocks have moved the highest, the most since the last released earnings. Bed Bath and Beyond. The uh, close after the last earnings was down here at four ninety five. It's currently up at uh, ten seventy. So that's one hundred and fourteen percent since uh, since the last earnings. So you can sort by any of these columns. Uh, if you wanted to sort by the last earnings, you could do that. So we can see now I'm looking at all of the stocks that had earnings reports that resulted in huge in huge moves. So the biggest one being uh, CVNA, which was a 40% move on that earnings release. Um, and then going through the list, we can see all of these big up moves uh, on the last earnings. You can also obviously sort in the opposite direction. And then you see all the stocks that had big down moves on those earnings. Uh, and you can go back through any of these. So you can say, you know, two bar two earnings ago, what, ha what had big moves, which stocks had big moves. You can kind of, if you like to see if, uh, it's always good to, to sort of get a visualization uh, as to whether an earnings, a particular quarter of earnings releases is has is significant. There used to be a time I remember back when uh, Netflix always used to you always used to trade the Netflix earnings uh, after Christmas because everyone bought a uh, subscription to Netflix after Christmas and the earnings. Uh, if you traded the uh, the earnings for Netflix in the uh, in quarter one, then you had some really good moves. So it's like things like that that uh, we're trying to so we can try and identify using uh, either looking at it visually, which is interesting, but this is uh, edge rater and it's uh, good for back testing. So I'm going to show a technique that allows you to um, actually run scripts against this data as well. And you can probably find uh, or think of your own ideas for scripts that you would like to run against this data. But now the data is in there, um, it's very easy to do. So let's just go ahead and uh, do a simple back test on earnings. First of all, before I do that, I don't want to move away from this screen just yet. If there are any questions on this report, uh, if you, I can, I can answer those uh, before we move away here, just so we're all clear about what is being shown here. Okay, okay, yeah. So the bottom of the chart, that's a good one. I'll talk a bit more about the chart in general because there's a few new chart layouts, which are good. This particular layout is the one that's attached to this report. And it is showing in the top area, it's got the overlay for the last bar before earnings. You've got the earnings moves in the middle area. And then the bottom area, uh, and then the bottom area is your expected move to the next options expiration versus the actual move to the to the next options expiration. And that is included in this in this default earnings view, because um, if you're thinking about trading options uh, or you know straddles or whatever you're thinking about trading, this expected move is a price which is derived from the actual price of options. And so, uh, so you can easily, and I'll talk about a bit about this a bit later when I talk about uh, straddles. Um, the, so the blue line is your expected move, and you can kind of tie that up with uh, when the earnings are, are due to be released. And then the green line is what actually happened uh, to the next expiration. So in general, any time you see the green line in between these blue lines, it means the actual move was not as uh, much as the expected move, and generally means that any straddle that you would have placed uh, will have lost money. Or if you had sold a straddle, you'd have made money uh, in that time. Anytime the green line steps outside this blue line, it means the actual move was higher than the expected move. The expected move is, is a move that's, that's uh, uh, forecast using the pricing of options. So it's really what options traders uh, and dealers think the price of the stock is going to be at the next uh, expiration. 
And any time the actual move is outside of that, um, people who have bought a straddle can make money uh, in general. And any time it's inside, uh, people who have sold a straddle will make money. So you can see there are, you know, mostly the, gr the green line stays inside the blue line. Uh, so mostly straddle sellers are making money, but there are times when it goes way outside and you get big jumps like this, in which case the uh, straddle sellers will have lost a lot of money and the straddle buyers would have made a lot of money. So the question then is, is if you're buying buying straddles, is, is, uh, can you, uh, is that going to make up for all of the losses that you've incurred um, up until that point? But anyway, it's, it's great information to, uh, to see on the chart. Um, okay, so the earnings plot had some better scaling. If, um, if you're thinking about the middle, uh, the middle area, this middle area, um, I, I'm guessing that's what you're talking about, middle area. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, obviously you can, you can drag these things up and down, but, uh, of course, uh, sometimes you get tiny moves in earnings, sometimes big moves and the, uh, the scaling just is an auto scaling. So it will just fit in whatever the largest, the largest one is you can drag on the right hand side of the chart to, uh, to scale it the, the way you prefer or double click at the right hand side to get auto scaling back. But yes, if you've got large earnings in there, the scaling can be a bit, um, uh, not that great. If you've got diff big differences between the highest and the, and the, the smallest earnings moves, not so great. Um, okay. The question mark, what does the question mark signify? Okay, where's the question mark? Let's see, in the report, let's go back down. Okay, so I, there are some question marks in here. So if you go to, let's see, I'll expand this view up a little bit. All right, and okay, so there's some question marks here. So let's look at Vale. Okay, Vale doesn't have any earnings listed here. So that's why there's a question mark. You can, you can see there are no earnings um, the next earnings are not uh, known. So for some reason that, you know, so always bear that in mind that, you know, the earnings data is, is really hard to get a definitive list of, of every single earnings for every single stock. Um, so it's possible that there are none at the moment forecast for, for Vale or just that they're not actually known by my, uh, my database. So, uh, I should also mention what you should do with the uh, the chart if you're looking for earnings in the future is make sure you set this expand right days up to a certain uh, number because if you're not expanding the right days you're not going to see a future earnings bar. So there are currently in Vail um, the last earnings that were that the system was aware of were way back over here. Okay, um, CEI there were earnings but on let's see that's the that's the next earnings i'm looking at of course there um but it's unknown as to whether that's going to be after market or before market so that's what that means in that case currently unknown as, as it gets closer to the date that will that can change uh, but the next earnings for cei for instance are 11 11 so it's in november um, but it's unknown as to what the schedule is for the release of the earnings before market or after but we know it's on that date but obviously those dates can change too. That's just a, anything that's in the future is a current, um, a current, I wouldn't say estimate is what's currently expected. Uh, but earnings release dates can change as you get closer to the, to the time. Okay. Um, there's a longish question here. I'll have to look at that a bit later. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's uh that's quite a, uh, quite a good one I'll, i will look at that later but um for the, yeah I, I don't think i'm going to be able to just uh, answer that quickly right here um in the bottom part what is the diamond that's a good question so the the bottom part if you remember this is your expected move to the next expiration the next options expiration um i ran this on the list of stocks that have weekly options and so this diamond appears every Thursday, it's, it actually represents the, the day prior to expiration. 
the diamond represents the day prior to expiration. So if it's weekly expirations, um, the expiration is going to be on a Friday. The day prior to expiration will be on a Thursday. So these diamonds should be on should be on the uh, on the Thursday. So so yeah, that's what uh, that's what the diamonds represent. Um, is there a better way to change the green line to a different color for better visibility? That um, you can change it, but there's it's not. Okay, you asked if there's an easy way. Okay, so um, there's, it's not as easy as you might uh, like it to be, uh, unfortunately. Uh, this script is, if I look at the chart scripts here, this is EM next versus AM. So this is a built-in script, which is in options data. EM next versus AM, if we find where that is. Um, so here it is, EM next versus AM. If I open this script up and I look at the code for the script, I'll expand that up a bit. Okay. Now, the uh, the AM line, you pr you might not be able to see that very clearly there, and actually I can't. Uh, I don't seem to be able to expand that for you to see at the moment. But anyway, this line is actually hard coded in the script to be green. So, um, so the way to make it a color you prefer would be to duplicate this script into your my scripts area, which you do just by clicking save as, but you change that color to something else. And then you'll have a script in under my scripts uh, where that line would be your own color. So that is the, uh, that's how you would do that. Uh, and you can make those obviously any color you like by doing that, but it's not as simple as just selecting the properties and changing the colors of the lines, unfortunately. All right, good. That's some good questions. Um, and I will look at your questions later, Ed. Sorry. Um, and the scripting language, it's a formula language. So it's very similar to, it's actually called chart script, edge rate to chart script. But it is a formula language, um, and it's very similar to other formula languages, such as uh, Metastock formula language, which uh, it's called MFL, or uh, AMI Broker formula language, uh, AFL. They will have <coughs> very similar ways of working. Um, and you know, if you were to look at some documentation for MFL or AFL, you would have a very good idea about um, how the how to write a, a script for for EdgeRater. Um, every script that's in EdgeRater also, you can view it. Uh, there's no hidden scripts here. So you can you can open them up and view them and modify them and save them under your own scripts area. And so, uh, you know, so there's always examples of, if you're trying to do something, there's probably an example that has been done already. And I should also mention that um, there is an address user called Henry, and Henry has submitted a lot of scripts for uh, everyone to use. Uh, and there is quite a lot in here. And you can open up any of these and take a look at uh, his code and see how he's written those scripts. Uh, so those, it was nice of him to provide, super nice of him to provide all that uh, for everyone to use. Um, and uh, Henry's also uh, provided some templates you may have seen for uh, uh, his own templates um, that you are also welcome to use. Uh, and they're all under the user category, user showcase category. So his latest one is, is Rob Smith's uh, strap bars. So you can take a look at that. That's a excellent little uh, template from, uh, from Henry too. So let's go to, let's go back over here and I'll move on to taking a look at, I'll move on to taking a look at tr uh, running some back testing on, on earnings. So in the, the back testing in edge rates is all in the entries and exits tab and the trade simulation tab. So in entries and exits, you're trying to generate uh, events that you want to, you want to test. Uh, obviously earnings are a good example of an event to test. And if we go over to the chart scripts library, and now there's a new a new area under there called earnings data. Uh, the, a good event for uh, testing is 
last bar before earnings sh shortened to LBBE. <clears throat> you can stick that in the, uh, double click it and it will pop in into the security selector and you can run that on whatever list you're looking at. And it generates basically uh, on every day, you're going to have a list of the stocks that have where it's the last bar before earnings. Uh, if you go to the exits tab, you can stick in their uh, first bar after earnings and you can generate those events. That should obviously just be the, the day after the last bar before earnings. Um, anyway, so you generate those two events and then you can go over to uh, the trade simulation tab and you can knit those two, the entry and the exit together. Um, and you say, okay, we'll, we'll run a simulation. We'll trade on the long side uh, on the close of the event bar. Uh, and we'll exit on the close of the exit event. Okay, so you've got basically a close, um, a close before earnings to a close after earnings, CBE to CAE uh, trade simulation here. And if you run that, you'll you'll end up with a trade list. Um, so now this has gone through the CBOE weekly list for ten years, and it's basically in the P and L column. You've now got a profit and a loss under here, column K, P and L column for every single um, earnings here. But you've also got some other information, which is which is uh, useful. So in the summary, we can look at, we see that there were 15,600 earnings in that, in that list over that time. And roughly equal in terms of, of how many of them were earnings up moves and how many were earnings down moves. And then the average uh, up or down, fairly, fairly equal too. And if we look at the p l distribution, well, it looks, <laughs> it looks like a pretty normal distribution. Yes. So it kind of indicates that in general, um, the, you, you don't know where, which way earnings are going to, are going to go. Um, and there's a lot of earnings that move up, uh, just a little bit between zero and 1%. There's a lot that move down between zero and, uh, 1% and way fewer that move up on the tail side of this. You go over to the very right hand. So there's lots of tail in this uh, in this distribution. You go over way over to the right hand side and we can see that uh, there's one right here, uh, a single one, which is 108% gain on earnings. And if you go way over to the right hand side, you can see there's one that had a 64-ish uh, percent loss. The uh, <clears throat> The area below here is also showing that same information, but in a in a tie in a um, in more of a, a trade by trade situation. So if you scroll through this list, uh, the green bars obviously are the the bars that had earnings moves that were positive. The red bars earnings moves that were negative. And so as you scroll through here, you'll find those big tails as well. You can also get a kind of a visual idea here as to. And this is also listed by date as well. So you can see just by scrolling through here, whether there were periods of time where um, companies were, you know, every company was having positive earnings moves or not. It doesn't tend to be that way, it seems. But you can take a look at this. I'm, I'm just saying that through uh, a quick browse here. So don't uh, don't read anything into that from what I say. Uh, take a look at this yourself and do some, uh, do some testing. Um, this uh, this is also an interesting thing to if you are on this screen the uh, this is the P and L distribution and you see a big green bar and you're interested in what what that actually was you can actually double click on that bar and what will happen is <laughs> what should happen is uh, if you double click on that bar uh, okay I think what's what's happening. So if I go back to the trade list, I double click on any one of these trades to so scroll down to the middle of the list somewhere. I can double click on a trade here. Okay. So I get a little pop-up chart of uh, the stock. And if I turn on my uh, annotations, the it will annotate the actual trade there. So I can kind of, I can leave that on top and I can just scroll down through this list and I can get a, a view of all of those uh, all of those moves as they go down through there. So if you want to see it visually, uh, that's a good way to do it. 
But now, once that chart has actually popped up, if I go back to the PL distribution and I click on any one of these bars down here, double click, then it's actually going to show it on that chart as well. So here's the big up move here. You can see that that was pins, P interest, a pin, a pin, I always say that it's Pinterest. Um, and you can see that was a, a big up move there. So that's a good way to kind of use this, use this report. Quite nice to see it, see it like that. I'll turn that, uh, turn that off. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we've now got a report of earnings in this, in this big long list. Well, we, we know there's, what did I say it was, uh, 15,000, yeah, 15,600 in here, but that's a lot of information, uh, in here to analyze. You can go and look at each individual chart, and it's, it, it's good to, uh, to go and do that. If you're a visual person, you can go and see every, every single instance there, um, and scroll through them very quickly. That's good to do. You can, uh, with this, you could pop this out and it becomes now a separate standalone spreadsheet viewer. And, and you can now save this as a Excel um, spreadsheet and you can then open it up in, in Excel, which is also useful. It's just a couple of things you can do with the, the trade simulation. But one thing, uh, what I'll move on to now is um, this is sort of a manual way of testing the, these uh, earnings. Um, if we go back over to templates and under trade simulation, there is now a built-in simulator for testing earnings. So if you go uh, trade simulation batch run right here, okay, and I um, use look for my config file, you should find now under sim, under, under trade simulation system, there is a Sim earnings, CBE to CAE. So it's close before earnings to close after earnings. And you can run this and output it to a any folder you like. It will output as an Excel file, but it will also show it in Edge Razor. And then you can choose particular dates if you want to override the dates that uh, are suggested. If, you're, if you don't override the dates, it will use every single date that's in the symbol list. And currently there are 10 years of, of data in there. Uh, or you can choose to just run this on a, a um, any range of data that you that you like, just by changing the information in here. Once you run this, it will generate for you a um, report that similar or identical, I should say, to the, the report we've just seen in the trade simulation tab. So this is now instead of running it manually, this now has been automatically generated for you. What you'll find is uh, when you when you run this, hang on one second. When you first run this, I'm gonna, so I had run this previously, so I'm just showing you the result. But what will happen is the report that will be shown is actually a report like this, a trade simulation batch run report. And um, so that's basically, the idea is it will show you this because potentially with the uh, the template, you can run, multiple simulations. Uh, this is only running one, which is the earnings simulation, um, but you could potentially run multiples. And so this will show you on a row by row the output of each of those simulations. Um, but then to get to the actual trade list, just to highlight the row or any cell in that row, and then click on open linked document, and that will open up the, uh, the report with the, the actual trade list there. It's also got all the other information in here. Like if you look at the tabs along the bottom, you've got the trade summary, you've got the, um, the, the daily equity data, daily equity chart, uh, all of the things that were available when you did it manually, they're also in this report too. But the most um, useful information for uh, potentially, I mean, the trade summary is, is obviously very useful information, but uh, a key piece of information here is the actual list of all of the trades that are in the simulation. Uh, it's really handy because then you can, the chart is linked to each of these trades. And as we go through, scroll down very quickly through the list, you can just see uh, all of the, all of the trades um, very quickly. One of the, the features of the chart is if you position Oh, I should say, so if you don't have annotations turned on, obviously you don't know which bar you're looking at for the trade. So turn annotations on. 
As soon as you turn annotations on, it's going to put the bar that uh, represents the entry date of the trade on the very right-hand side of the chart. Um, and so sometimes that's useful. Uh, sometimes you might prefer to see it in the center of the screen. So drag it over to the center. And now whenever you scroll through the list, it's always going to put that entry bar in the same place. So it's always going to be in the center of the screen. But if you ever um, have lost where the uh, annotation is, you scrolled away from it, you can always, and now it's never going to show it again because it's always going to put it uh, where it is, way off to the left-hand side. You can just turn the annotations off and on again, and it will put it on the right-hand side of the screen. So I'll just drag it into the middle here. Um, so that's cool. <clears throat> right. So, uh, so that's a really great uh, piece of information for, uh, for back testing. But there's more because what will, will, <laughs> uh, and I'll explain why there's more. What you could do here is you could say, let's just sort by PL. Okay. If you do that and you, you, you then can kind of uh, we'll sort in positive to negative, there's the 108 uh, earnings right there. So now you can see all of the stocks that had good, um, good moves after earnings. But, but it's no good uh, if you're trading to, uh, to just see this after uh, the event. You're, you're getting a record of what happened, which is interesting. Um, but is there any predictability in this? So that's, you know, is there an edge essentially? Can you find an edge in, in trading earnings? Overall, if you look at the entire list of, of symbols, as we did in the trade simulation, and we look at the PL distribution, you see it's a pretty normal distribution. It doesn't seem to be, when you're looking at the whole list, any um, any any edge there. However, what if you looked at individual stocks and individual quarters? As I said before, in, you know, it used to be that um, Netflix was a great trade in uh, in Q1. Okay, if you if you bought uh, if you bought options in out of the money options even in Netflix in Q1 back in the day, you could do that you know year after year and would make a, a lot of money. Um, it's kind of not uh, worked recently, but it used to be. And so, are there th are there stocks like that that are that exist today? Is the question. So, the way to find that is that is to run the multi-factor trade analysis. Okay. So we've already got we've already got our trade list generated when we ran that report. It general, I'll show you where that is on the system, make things clear. When we ran that report, yeah, so this is the actual earnings file that it's generated, okay? So that exists now. We have a record of, of those earnings. So what we can do is we can take uh, those files as input into this multi-factor trade analysis template. So what I can do is I can go and choose the um, CBOE earnings uh, report. What I can do is and this, and now this is key, pay attention to this because if you get this wrong, um, you could uh, tie the computer up for a while, which I made the mistake of doing earlier today. If you just ran this, now after selecting that file, it's gonna try and do a lot of um, uh, tagging and simulations that you probably really don't want to do. Um, so. Don't try and run this, this on the default set of tags. There is, um, choose a tag file that is, the tagging I want is I want to tag those trades by the quarter, but I also want to include um, uh, the symbol as well as one of the tags. And I had to generate my own tag file for that. It's called tag layout symbol quarter. I will actually include this in uh, an upcoming, the next uh, time I do an update for Edgerator. So this will be available to, to you. It's very simple to put together if you wanted to do it before then. And it's, it's just an Excel file that looks like this. Basically take one of the others as, a, as a, an example and just 
copy this, you're basically going to say that uh, symbol is is one of your tag items, and then you're going to have the quarter is another tag item, and it's going to look up the quarter from this tag lookup file. But don't worry about the actual details; you can copy that from 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 this screen. Okay, but it will be included in the next release as well. So what I'm going to do is just choose that file, symbol and quarter. So now I've got way less uh, tagging and it's going to do way fewer combinations in order to generate this multi-factor analysis. But I want to make it even simpler than that. And I want to actually test. Uh, so I'm going to put a one into the quarter column. So I'm going to get symbol and quarter together. And I'm going to actually right click on this uh, row here and say delete cells. And I'm going to delete the entire row. So the only tagging and combinations it's going to do is symbol and quarter. And so if I, if I press run here, it's still going to take um, two, three minutes to run, but it's uh, a lot quicker than if you did all of them together. Uh, I have run this earlier. And what will happen is once you run this, you'll end up with a report uh, here. And let me close down the chart. Okay, so this is now a summary of uh, Monte Carloing all that information together. So you can see the, the tags that were used there. Symbol um, is put in just so that we, you know, we'll see wants to know what the symbol is. So it's going to uh, uh, do combos of those symbols uh, in combination with the quarters. So now if you sort this by, let's see, we'll sort by positive to negative. I've already filtered this down to uh, only show counts of 10 or more. So, th so what this actually means is uh, anytime there are more than 10 Q4s in the data, in this case, right? First row is looking at uh, PPG and Q4. This happens to be the one that came to the top of the list when I pressed um, sorted by percent positive. Okay, so PPG Q4 is at the top of the list with average turn of 1.51%. But out of the last, uh, well, if there were 10 Q4s, that's the last 10 years. So out of the last 10 years, every one of those Q4 results resulted in a positive um, uh, move on earnings uh, for PPG. And then similarly for SKX in Q1, every one of those resulted in a, uh, a move, 9.5% average in that case. Then uh, you've got PayPal Q2 is pretty good for up moves. Obviously, you can sort this the other way and, and get uh, and get down moves, but you can go down through this list and see. I think one that I had uh, sent out an email about was uh, WW Weight Watchers. So I just wonder if there's any <laughs> if there's any uh, reason why Q2 for Weight Watchers would be a good would be a good uh, quarter, but I can imagine it's to do with um, New Year's resolutions and things like that. Um, but yeah, Q2 for Weight Watchers, nine out of nine out of ten of those uh, quarters um, over the last ten years have been have been positive, with an average of eight point three eight. So there's really useful information to see there. And if you want to get into more detail about that, so. Seeing just an average is is not that useful. It's 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 somewhat useful, but um, a simple average uh, can be very misleading because one year can be you know you could have a, an eighty percent move up one year, and um, the next year you might have a five percent move or a one percent move or a zero you know zero point one percent move. We know it's positive because the positive and negative, but uh, because there's such a range. You know the average is not going to give you all the, the information, so it's useful to go and see those individual, um, the individual occurrences. Uh, particularly if you had found something that's coming up for earnings um, tomorrow or next week or whenever, and you're thinking about trading it um, for earnings to try and get a positive move, uh, uh, you probably want to go back and and actually check out the occurrences, the prior occurrences, and so. The way to do that is to highlight the row, click on open linked document. That's actually just going to open up the trade list that we've already seen many times. And 
if I go back to, uh, I forgot which row I clicked on now, but um, what did I click on? So I'm trying to find, let me go, let me go back to the very top of this list. So, so I'm, I'm, let's, for example, say, ah, let's look at Weight Watchers. Okay. So Weight Watchers it has nine up years, um, one down year in the last 10 years in Q2, for Q2 earnings. So let's go, we've opened up the actual trade list. Now we can do filtering over here for symbol Weight Watchers. So I can just, obviously I can just uh, uncheck all of them except for Weight Watchers. I can, oops, Weight Watchers, WW. I'm pretty sure they're not actually called Weight Watchers anymore. They might just be called WW International, but anyway. Okay, and now um, the quarter that's of interest was Q2. So I can just select Q2 here. Now I've got a list of all of those 10 occurrences. We can see the one down year there. We can see the PNL for each of the years. Okay, so um, obviously we can see those on a chart too. We just pop this chart back out. Boom, like so. And then as we go scroll down through here, position this where we want to see the actual move there. And then we can just take a look at those and see, you know, get an idea. If you're thinking about trading that quarter, then you probably, it's probably a good idea to uh, take a look at the pre prior occurrences. So then you can just scroll down through this list and see each of these moves. The big one obviously was in 21, um, when it had a 25 or uh, 25.92 percent move if you look at the bottom of this area now we is a good a good use of the uh the expected move versus the actual move you see the green line is way outside the blue line so that you can imagine if you had traded options here um out, even out of the money options in, in weight watchers here uh there could have been some very nice returns uh, if you want to see the actual returns that could have been achieved, that is also possible using the uh, performance options performance between dates template. And uh, so to do that, we go over to the options analysis, options performance between dates. I always just run this regardless using the default data. And I, because I'll, after it's generated the report, I can draw a line on the chart to actually update the information. So I'd like to pop this in the bottom area of the screen. And this is just the default um, information it's showing me. So I don't care about that. I'll go back over to my Weight Watcher chart and I'll just draw a line from this bar here to the next bar. And this report will now will update and it will show me the actual um, move of every possible expiration that was available at that time. And also all of the possible deltas that you could have, you could have uh, um, been into. Okay. And so from this chart, you can see that uh, on that one day move, if you used a, a two day to expiration option, which is, would basically have been this one that expired on the Friday, the 7th, remember the diamond points to the Thursday prior to options expiration. So, um, and that is the blue there. The point two delta was a 550-ish percent. We can look down and find the exact number down here. 560% uh, gain in that option. So, uh, but now take a look at one that didn't move like the 0.19 here. We expect that this is a big loss in any option. So we'll draw a line from here to here. Um, for some reason that did not uh, stick, but let's try that again. Uh, what date is that? Oh, I don't actually have data. So options data um, in edge data goes back to 2014. We don't have data for, for that. That was 2013. Okay, so let's choose a, another one, 2.8%. Okay, uh, just draw that quickly. Okay, so we'll click on the 2.8%. This was in 2016. Okay, we will have information for that. So I'll click on there, draw my line from here to here, and wait a few seconds. 
and this should populate with oh here's the thing <laughs> i do know about this um yeah weight watchers changed their symbol it used to be wtw okay uh so the options database has actually got wtw as the symbol hmm. that needs to be updated so uh not a good example to use there they changed their symbol in 2019 i believe uh, so we're trying to actually find information using an incorrect symbol you get the idea we'll choose a different symbol um or we can just choose later years like 21 well 21 is a big up year um uh 22 i wanted to show a losing year 2018 unfortunately that's before okay but we can choose other symbols to uh to see uh to see that one too um okay i should have thought about that beforehand so Paul R is um 10 quarters is that a big enough sample size um up to you that really is up to you is that a big enough sample size on the one hand you could say 10 years is is uh you know I think 10 years is the, the problem is I think that in the such as with the case with Netflix is that things go in and out of favor on those on those times so and actually the more it's more important to have the last maybe couple of years or three years because they are trends that are sort of starting to uh to form um and actually if you start to use 10 years or even more than 10 years uh it may not be so uh significant unless you can get those 10 out of 10s or 20 out of 20s um and, and when i say it's up to you you can actually choose to populate your symbol list with more than 10 years of data you could use 20 years of data um and then you would have 20 quarters you know 20 q3s or q4s uh, but i would question as to whether that would be actually useful uh information because the further back in time you go the, the less relevant i think that that uh that, that is that might just be my my opinion um so so yeah if you think it's more relevant to have more use more data for sure definitely uh but do think about the relevance of uh of 20 year old data so there yeah so i want to, i wanted to kind of quickly talk about um uh, options straddles because another way to play options rather than taking a single call um with a direction or a put with a with a which is directional is to uh, is to do option straddles where you buy a call and a put at the same strike um and if the stock moves up a lot if the stock moves outside of its expected move you can make money um and if it stays within the expected move you it basically can lose a lot of money so um so i'm not advocating doing any of that but just out of interest uh and i have been talking with uh, tom and tom is on here today um uh because he's, he's he's sort of started a, a, a th an email thread with me about uh trading straddles on earnings which i thought was uh, a very interesting um topic and so i have been asking a few more questions about it and i've got a couple of uh, of charts that i'd just like to show so let me just uh, bring that up it's over here okay so investigating earning straddles okay so in so if you, as you've seen in edge rates you can get a list of the things that have uh, the stocks that have upcoming earnings um and here's an example from friday so i was talking with tom about this on thursday and he was monitoring the straddle prices of these stocks uh from the close on the let's see that would be the close on the 25th to the uh the open on the 26th and the close on the 26th um okay so let's go just go through some of that information so so this is uh alter that had it, that did have the earnings as we we'll just go back to that list i'll show you so alter had had earnings uh aftermarket close on 25th yeah so we go there so the straddle based on the close price was down here and the so the at the money straddle at the close on the 20 25th 
cost 2660. Uh, the following day at the open, that straddle price was 1305. So lost a lot of money. But if you'd sold the straddle, made a lot of money. And then near the close of that uh, that day, I believe that was Friday, um, it was 560. So it lost an incredible amount of money by that time. So volatility crush uh, completely happens after that announcement. Now, if you look to that in Edge Racer, this is Alta Beauty, you can see uh, similar things without having to go into the Think or Swim uh, information. It's interesting, useful to go into Think or Swim because it's real, actual real data. Um, whereas this EM Next uh, is an expected move calculation based on implied volatility, um, as opposed to actual op, uh, pricing of those straddles. But you can see the green line was way inside the blue lines here. So that does indicate that that was a incredibly lossy straddle. So then we'll take a look at AFRM. Okay, cost of that straddle at the close was five seventy five. Uh, at the open, you could get three forty four for it, so it lost some money. Uh, near the close, you could get six twenty five, so a slight a slight gain. Uh, you could have made a little bit of money um, by buying that straddle. Now in Edge Rater, if you see here AFRM, you can see that this green line. Yeah. It looks like it's just touching the blue line. So you can see that, yeah, you, you kind of broke it. You would think here you broke even on that straddle, um, as opposed to the actual data shows that you would have made some money. Um, I think the green line is slightly outside here. So this is kind of showing that you would have slightly made money too. Um, let's take a look at GPS. So yeah, I believe. Um, so that would have been a dollar six debit. Uh, very, very lossy here. The open price was 59. The close, the close price is 11. Uh, and, and the reason that I'm looking at, or I asked uh, Tom about uh, record near the close is, is it more, uh, is it potentially better to hold that uh, straddle until the close of the next day or sell it at the open? Uh, so we're trying to get some information. This is a very limited set of information. It's just one day. Um, but you know, if we can do this going forward, uh, if people, if anyone's really interested in in kind of monitoring this information going forward, I can uh, totally set up um, a channel where we can have a discussion about that, um, and that would probably be on something like Discord. So, if anyone's interested in that, you can let me know in the chat if anybody, if you are interested in uh, in doing something like that. Um, but I could set that up and and then everyone could kind of talk about uh, these straddles um, and monitor, monitor them going forward. So, uh, so yeah, Pete's interested. That's, that's good. Uh, okay, next one, GPS. Oh, yeah, so GPS, look, the green line's almost at the zero. So the, expect, the actual move was, was kind of nothing, way lossy. We can see that. And then... If we look at uh, Marvel, Marvel is was cost four thirty one for the straddle at the open. The next day you could have got two thirty eight for it, uh, so it would have lost money. But near the close you could have got four eighty eight, so made slight amount of money. Uh, and this green line just inside the blue line, so it's not perfect. Um, this actually was a winning straddle, but it's indicated here that it's slight losing. But this this is not the perfect picture here. Uh, but it does give you an idea of how close it was to meeting the uh, the expected the expected move. Slightly lossy straddle. Uh, and then I think the final one here is is work a day, work day, <laughs> work day. Twelve thirty five cost the straddle at the open the following day. Eleven sixty five at the close. Four twenty seven. Massive lossing stra lossy straddle, and uh, indicates lossy straddle here. So and so the, just the idea of this this image is just that. Can you go back in time and and just is this actually giving you good information about whether a straddle was was a winning straddle or not? And just by going back and looking at the green versus blue line, it seems to be it gives you good information. Uh, yeah, so that's that's that. All right, Ed is interested. Yeah, that's it. It's a good so yeah. So Ed, Ed that would be a great thing to uh, to monitor. Um, Ed so I don't know if anyone can read the chat, but it's saying um, that uh, 
a potential idea is that uh, once direction is determined, close the losing side and let the other run. And that can you can definitely monitor. We can definitely monitor that going forward. Uh, Ross is interested. <laughs> okay, great. And Ross has another strategy. So, but yeah, it sounds like you'd be interested in uh, joining in a Discord. Who actually does anyone actually use Discord at the moment? It does seem to be a, a good way to set up uh, uh, chats and, and be able to share images and whatnot. Okay, Tom. So, sorry, it's great information. You need to know the day before the diamond what you might do for the close to place your position. Correct. Yeah, you do need to know. Well, the day before, you need to know the last, what we're talking about is the um, the last trading day before earnings. So the close of the last trading day before earnings. So that would be the blue, the blue line here. And now potentially, so on Friday, we did, we did that test um, Thursday to Friday. Friday is an options for the, is options expiration for weekly options. And so that was like a one day to expiration. But if earnings are reported on a um, Wednesday, <clears throat> the closest earn the closest um, you can get in terms of days to expiration would be the Friday. So it would be uh, two days. Uh, well, actually, if you trade it on Wednesday, it'd be three days to expiration, um, and then to be closing it with two days to expiration left. So different sort of uh, different parameters. There's still some time built into into that straddle when you close it. Um, yeah, and so I think there's a good set of uh, people who are interested in in monitoring this. Um, and I mean, personally, I've, uh, uh, Tom, I, so I thank you for the information you sent me. Those those uh, those images were really clear. And uh, so something like that, if if you know if that was available in the Discord, uh, or people were able to post things like that, I think that would be super helpful to uh, to everybody. So uh, I think I'll. Uh, We'll try it next week. Then I'll try and get something set up for uh, for Discord. I'll send out information to anybody on here who expressed interest, and uh, and we'll we'll try and get something going. I think it'll be that'll be cool. Yeah, there is something I missed. I think on the charts that in the chart layouts, there's other there are other layouts that I've that I've added in here. So under chart layouts, under earnings, you'll find the the default one that's attached to the report, but you also find some others. So there's one here called earnings in implied volatility. So it's a similar idea, but it's using IV30, so 30 day to expiration uh, options. And it's looking at that implied volatility. Uh, so you can kind of see how the 30 day to expiration options implied volatility um, works around earnings. Uh, there's also, this is an interesting one, the, the first, bar after earnings line and a level so this okay what you've got plotted on the chart is these the dots are the first bar after earnings uh, so you could kind of think of that as once earnings are released and a whole trading day has occurred now everyone has agreed that with the latest information that that is the price of the of the stock so that's an important level uh, so that's why there there are dots there. So you could think, well, you can ignore everything between those dots. That's just noise. Obviously, it's not just noise. There are other things built in, like you know, um, macroeconomic cool type things and uh, uh, other little bits of news that come up. But you could, you know, you could potentially say you can ignore all of that information in between and just look at uh, the after earnings first bar after earnings move. And that gives you a better idea of a trend of a of a stock, okay? And the level below here is just holding that price for the entire period until the next earnings are released. And so they, there you see the level drops down. So that gives you a nice idea of, uh, <laughs> of the move of a stock without all of the noise of, of everything in between earnings. So that's quite a nice little chart. Okay, yeah, okay, Tom S. Great. Um, yeah, anyone who's expressed interest on here for that, I will send out, I will send invitations to the Discord to uh, to see if you would like to join. 
and we'll get something going. It's going to be quite small, I would imagine, to start with, uh, but it, but it will be good. Um, John, would this work for the queues each week? Yeah, well, queues are, uh, I believe, well, I think Spy, I'm not sure about queues, um, and but I'm just thinking of the weeklies versus versus midweeks. I think Spy has uh, midweek expirations. Queues might have midweek expirations as well. But yeah, you've got more expirations in those ETFs than just weekly expirations. So that gives, obviously there are no earnings with queues. Um, but uh, but if you're just looking at uh, expected move versus actual move, of course that will that will work. Yeah, absolutely, that will work. Until we, if we bring up queues now, QQQ, and bring my layout of earnings. Uh, obviously, there are no earnings, but uh, we will get the we will get the expected versus actual move in here. Now, if you look down here, I'm looking at the queues. See those diamonds are occurring not just every Friday; they're occurring on uh, Thursday, so it's the day before expiration. They're occurring on Tuesday because there is a Wednesday expiration. So yes, the expected move versus actual move does work on queues as well. Anything else I've uh, wanted to mention there? So the chart you've got the chart layouts, the uh, this level, which I, I like this, this level, you need to choose something with earnings to see the level. I like it. I don't know how many people will find that interesting, but I think it just cuts out all of the noise, the noise in a stock. What else? Um, uh, percent move. Okay, so that's the line level and the percent move on earnings. Yep. We know what that is. And then what's that one? This is the implied. Okay, so this one is a similar uh, layout, but instead of showing the earnings move, it's got the implied volatility of the next expiration. Uh, with higher implied volatility, that gives you higher expected moves. So that's just showing you how implied volatility uh, goes crazy high. Uh, around earnings for the next expiration. In fact, if so, an interesting comparison there is if you did, if you take a look at options data, we'll put IV30 on. So it's down here. So that's IV next. Let's take that off and IV30. Okay, so you can see IV next, the next expiration. It goes really high. That's 173% implied volatility, 235%, 250%. But the implied volatility of the 30-day to expiration option also goes sort of peaks at uh, those earnings, not for every stock, but for some. Um, but, but you'll find you'll find stocks where it doesn't seem to affect the uh, the 30-day to expiration option so much. Uh, but it does lead to other interesting ideas for trading too, because if you know that implied volatility is going to rise towards earnings, then buying uh, calls or puts leading up to earnings, uh, you can get a boost from the increase in implied volatility as well. So that's interesting stuff. Anyway, um, pretty useful for basic spreads and seeing which stocks Actual move stays under the expected move. Absolutely, Ross. Yeah, I think the, the expected move versus actual move is a is a gem, really. Um, EM next versus AM. Yeah, that is a real. In, it's a really useful uh, bit of information. Expe if the green line is at the blue line, it means that the stock is always hitting the expected move. Uh, so expected. So then you can see, well, expected move doesn't mean where the stock is really expected to be. It's a, it's a level within certain standard deviations. Um, so normally, the price ends up inside there. So that's super useful information to know. If you always look at expected move and you say, well, really, what are my chances here of uh, of a stock uh, making another 
uh, three or four points here, you can look down to the expected move and say, well, no, it's probably not because normally the actual move ends up inside the expected move. So anyway, <laughs> all kinds of useful things to, uh, to look at in there. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to cover. Thanks all for coming and uh, I will send out information about the Discord and we'll, uh, we'll see how that works out next week. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. See you next time.